Well, hello and welcome to the Below the Rim show, tackling British basketball rumours, not rumours, trying to get to the bottom of things. Um, I'll introduce the lads first. Adam, my man, how's it going? Beautiful day up north. Good man, good man. Josh, how you doing? Even better day down south. I've made level uh, less than 10 now. I'm almost fluent. Oh, good lord. Good luck to you. Good luck to you, sir. Shalom. <laughs> And our special guest, our GB specialist, Hannah Shaw, how you doing? Oh, good, thank you. you Second guys? show now, isn't it? You've been on the show it before, is. haven't you? There you I go. Have, yeah. Last time I got a whole two hours, but like, um, I do have some things to do before lunch today, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll fly so through this one. Um, we, we got you on specially because it is, of course, um, we, we've had reports that uh, Temi Fag Burnley and Carly Samuels have been cut from their respective W uh, NBA teams ahead of the, the coming season. I mean, we'll, we'll go to you straight away and say, what, what can you say about this, first of all? Um, obviously, with every season ending early and there being no training camps and no way for anybody to really show like, what, what they can do, it, it must be hugely disappointing for them as players and for fans. It must be super disappointing. And I know, I know that... Temi withdrew herself and wanted to rest this summer. So maybe waved isn't the right word, but that's, that's what it is. Um, but especially for Carly, who I know really wanted to make the team. And I believe is a cracking enough player to be, to be in that final 12. But hopefully there's other opportunities to come. So you say, I mean, Mark Woods broke the, the Twitter news. There's a couple of articles uh, online. Landon Burford, one of them. He talks more about um, Christine Inigwe getting picked up. Uh, by the LA Sparks. Um, but in terms of Temi, that's interesting news. She's obviously, like you say, rather than been cut or been waived, she's elected not to play this 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 season for them. I mean, um, doing a full season in Europe and then going off to do three or four months in the USA, I mean, that's a lot. That's, that's really no break because the WNBA season goes right, right into most of them, most teams' pre-season. So then you're coming in, you're not really getting a proper rest and then you're going straight into something without be being there from the start. So I, I can totally understand this needing to rest as everybody's body does, but also mentally. Mm, absolutely. Different, that's a different slant on it. Ads, my man, let's, let's bring you in. Yeah, it's, it was interesting when I saw it. So I've, I've done some digging around myself. I've, I've just got off the WNBA website and there's another site that I found that's quite interesting. Um called what's it called now it's going to give you this for a reference point it's called swish appeal huh. i've never been on it before um and they sort of do a comprehensive list of movements that have been going on I, i'm really disappointed because this season for dallas for gb fans was going to be amazing because potentially you have both samuelsons playing on the team and Christina Nigwe, and it's like, wow, you know, a WNBA team rep by three, you know, British British players, so it's going to be great. But as I understand it, Christine was traded to um, LA Sparks, and it actually comes up on their page on the WNBA from the 26th, which I think was yesterday. Um, it's got traded next to her name. Now, I'm assuming that that obviously means she was traded too rather than she's been traded again, but it doesn't really give a, a, a clear answer as to what's going on there. But it does say um, that, unfortunately, Carly had been cut. I can't find any mention of, of semi fab Benley anywhere on there. So the, the speculation out is similar to what Hannah said, and this is purely speculation. I mean, it's not been said that she's been traded or cut or anything like that. Now... For the players that played, especially at the Olympic tournament, you know, and then have gone on to do seasons wherever they've done it, the emotional strain on them is going to be massive, especially, I think, for players like Temi, who, let's face it, was one of the outstanding players of the entire tournament, not just in her, in her group. And, and, and she was given, uh, she was made the, the all five team for the, the was it just for their. For your yeah, group, Hannah. For the six, yeah. for our group in Serbia, she was the all, the all. Yeah, and, and it must have been worse for you guys, Hannah, because seeing her 
sort of accepting something she really wasn't bothered about getting because the prize that everybody wanted was qualification. So yeah, I'm sort was... of thinking mental check the strain on, on everyone involved in that must have been a big part of where everybody's at physically, mentally and in, in preparation for the season. Yeah, definitely. Um, it was obviously, and it still is, pretty heartbreaking. Um, and for her to have such such an incredible tournament, and for, for us just not to get it done, that you know, three teams go out of four, that that's super disappointing to miss out. And it really is an opportunity missed. But I can completely understand the the need to have that rest, like mentally as well as as well as physically. Mm. I mean, the the other thing about Semi as well as I've interviewed at, um, at Bellevue after a game and she's I, I spoke to her for a little bit after the interview and she's she's a she's a fascinating person because Carly she's obviously a graduate of Harvard as well and uh, she's one of those kind of unique people that basketball isn't everything to her as a professional she's got like a plan b to, to do mm -hmm. other things do you know what I mean and I really kind of admire her for that because if she has decided herself that she's not going to play this year and she's put herself through hard work in that position to do so. You know, maybe she's at a point where she's thinking about what direction she's going. She's still young, though, so, you know, there's every chance that she will get picked up and end up back on a WNBA roster. Um, Minnesota still hold her rights, though. So um, if she elected to play next year, it would be with Minnesota until, until or if anything was then to happen again. Mm. So. Josh Moore, yeah. let's bring you in. And first of all, I watched all those games where you guys played in Serbia, and I thought, you know, the, the sort of synergy and the camaraderie of the team was very, very strong. And I felt in a lot of those games, you definitely could have pulled away with the victories, and that is kind of how the game of basketball goes. But in terms of yourself and behalf and sort of the team, what do you see the future for GB Women's Basketball? Um, I want to remain really, really hopeful because I do feel like we have... We have quality players coming through. We, we've shown that we can compete. Obviously, I think there's a lot of work to be done with um, development in this country. It is getting better, but there's still a lot of work to be done. And obviously, every, it's no secret that we have a dysfunctional organisation behind it. I don't want to go too much into that, but also everyone is aware that there are problems. And I think everything needs to be ironed out and we need to all be unified in, in going forwards because otherwise, what's the point? What's the point in having this, this great product that we can try and move forwards and we can try and push if, if we don't really have the tools at the top to do that? I remember it was the Korea game. I think you played Korea, didn't you? Was it South yeah. Korea or China? Yeah, you played both of them. But I remember watching and, you know, we talk about Pagdemi, we talk about players such as, such as yourself and... What I notice is, and this seems to be the same on, on story, with GB Women's Basketball, player for player, there's no doubt that we probably have better talent than the teams we're playing against. But when I see these other nations, the one thing I notice about them is just their awareness and understanding for each other. And I don't know if that's whether they all know each other, they play in the same domestic league, or there's more time they have as a national team, but do you feel the GB Women's National Team will probably benefit more and could be more successful if you have more time together? A hundred percent. I mean, we, I mean, Chema likes shorter camps. We all know that and we think it's great, but the amount of times that we get together isn't really enough. But then we don't have the money to be having national team camps in the summer or especially with a lot of people. So bringing lots of people to get them in, into the kind, of, um, the kind of environment that we want to run. So it is difficult because, you know, pretty much all of the Chinese team play, play in China. So they all are, are aware of the same systems. They see each other week in, week out. The same with Korea. There's a lot of them all in the same system. And the same with a lot of the other European, or European countries. And, it, you know, we, we're everywhere. I mean, we, it's very rare for us to have two or even three players in the same country. So, you know, it, it's, it is big for us to, to have that extra time together. Um. In terms of the training camps, I heard that China have been together since January preparing for this tournament. Yep. And as always, for the GB team, you get like this two-week slot 
to reconvene, you know, not necessarily even be on court because you got to travel and do what you got to do. And I, I really think that it sounds weird, but I think that Team GB women are just a, a training camp away from qualifying for that tournament. You know, if you'd have had a bit more time and maybe some more warm up games, whatever, you guys have been ready because the performance we've seen at Eurobasket was so good. Does, yeah, do you agree I, with that? I, I would agree with that. I think it's diff it's easier for the, the Chinese league and the Korean league shut down for a month because of the international window. So that's great for them because then that allows all of their players to be released. Whereas we actually, us, the rest of the European uh, leagues, you only get released for those maybe 10 days. So you only have a few days of camp. So I think half the team went to London a few days early. I had to get asked to be released for extra days. Um, and practiced in London for a couple of days. And then we flew out to Serbia where the rest of the team joined us. So we probably didn't really have many practices with a full tw uh, 12 squad um, going into it. Whereas if you've got a team like China that have been together for at least a month, then it's obviously they're going to be more well-drilled. They're going to be more familiar with each other's playing style. Yeah, I mean, the, the, your team was so locked into one another like the little family type vibe. It's like I always say, like the gang's back together. You know, that was such a huge part of it all. Yeah, definitely. If you guys just had that extra chance to get some more work in before the tournament, you know, I'm convinced that, you know, and it's easy to do all this hindsight stuff, oh, if this, if that, but I, I genuinely believe that that is legit the reason yeah. why. I mean, qualify. It's simple as that. We're totally good enough and totally good enough to compete at the Olympic level as well. It's not not even a question, mm -hmm. which is why I was, I'm was. i still gutted thinking about it again. It was horrible me, how you guys must have felt. Oh, let's not go there. <laughs> well, you mentioned as well the squad getting together and, and Christine Inigwe was kind of a new addition to that squad, wasn't she, <laughs> coming in? She obviously now... Um, so Dallas Wings have traded her to the Sparks, along with, I think it's a third round draft pick, something like that. How, how do you guys, I mean, is, is she part of, uh, as, from what you know, is she part of GB's plans moving forwards as well? Yeah, she is, um, of course. Uh, I know she, she was injured in Serbia, so that explains why she didn't spend a lot of time on the court. So that, I mean, that's, that is a big blow, but also she's, just, you know, she's going to a title contender with, with LA. She She's already had like a pretty good, like rookie campaign in the WNBA, so she'll do nothing but like good things for GB. Um, but yeah, her going to LA is huge. They're they're going to be a title contender. They're going. She's she's there. She's going to learn under Candace Parker. You, you can't deny the talent and the uh, expertise that she's going to she's going to pick up there. And there is a there is a clip floating around of her throwing down as well. There's quite a few actually. <laughs> So, yeah. Have you seen, have you experienced that? Or she, I suppose, being injured, she maybe didn't try and. No, I've not experienced that. I actually think she's really sweet. So, <laughs> I don't think she would fight me. <laughs> try and fight Brittany Griner, but no, don't come for me because I will have you. <laughs> Josh, my man. And just going back to sort of like you know development, we talk about sort of organisations and need an improvement. What what is, what's your current opinions on the state of women's basketball right now in the United Kingdom? I. I think I should have written some more notes for that question, but um, I think I don't want to take away from what people are doing because I do think people are, it is getting better, but I don't think we're getting enough girls into the system. We're not getting people early enough to go and play, play mini ball under 14, just to get people into learn, learn fundamentals to get all the development and stuff like in at an early age. And so that we can get more women and girls staying in basketball. And also, it's been no secret that I've criticised the amount of women's coaches in, in our country. Like, we, we've got Vanessa's the only female head coach in the WBBL. So we have one female head coach in the WBBL and we have one female assistant coach in the men's league. Like, how is that the same amount of coaches across that? that that's crazy. Um, and I know it was a great start for GB for the junior stuff, having the lead -ins have the under-16s this summer. Obviously, plans, plans have gone out the window, but 
hopefully we can get more women involved and we can really grow the women's game because we are proving that on an international stage we are like a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, there's definitely a heavy yeah. representation, that's for sure. Yeah. That's it. The way I look at it at the moment is is that the GB women's team are kind of at, at the sort of like a peak, the height of, of where they've been for a long. The team's been unbelievable for the past couple of years. What what I kind of feel is is that there's going to be a weird gap in the players such as yourself, Joe Leadham, Steph Collins, Rachel Vanderwall, Georgia, you know, veteran players are going to be looking towards the next step of their careers, retirement, whatever you want to call it. However, the light at the end of the tunnel is that there is some real, real talent. Now, the three names I've scribbled down here, uh, Esther Little down in Ipswich, who I believe is um, going to Gonzaga, which mm -hmm. is a big D1 school um, when the season gets underway. We've got Holly Winterburn, who, as we know, has, has just changed schools at D1 level. But here in Manchester, we've got young Jaden Bam, who's going out to the States as well. She's going to be announcing um, where she's going probably next week. So you've got this sort of gap now of three, four years while they develop. But there is some seriously talented players coming through at the moment. And I just wonder how we're going to bridge that gap in between. I think that's a really important question and I think um, the, the, the governing body will be trying to look at that especially because we do, like I worked with the under 20s last year and although we didn't place as highly as I think everyone in the squad, uh, coaching staff thought that we could, um, it, we did show some real promise. I mean, as you said, Winterburn, like incredible player. So if we can get her involved, uh, Lauren Christie was great. Um, I've suddenly forgotten all the name of the all the names of the girls, so I apologise. But um, that it's quality players that we have and a quality product coming through. So now the governing body and GB Basketball really has to do a good job of getting them involved sooner. Whether they just come to training camps or whether they're dipping in throughout the year, then they can be ready to step up to the to the senior women's team. Well, that that bit in between. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. The, the, the player that I've always championed um, as a contender for the GB team, and it's nobody's fault that she's not represented GB yet, is Sam Roscoe mm -hmm. from, uh, from Manchester. Sam's dual nationality, Aussie, UK, and she's still, I think she's only 24, Sam. She's playing pro in Germany next season. Um, I know that she's desperate to, to make the GB team. And she's another one that could say she's at the right age and place in her career to become one of the next batch of leaders who could make a real impact. So uh, I'd love to see Sam get in there. I think the problem there is uh, she classifies as a naturalised player and you're only yeah. allowed one on the squad. So she's taken up Carly, it would be Carly Samuelson's spot. Mm. So it's, yeah, I, I can understand that. But it, I mean, Samuelson's not going anywhere, like, soon. Yeah, yeah. She, it's she's it's also, yeah, I think it's more kind of that um, if there was some, something done behind the scenes with her passports and oh, where okay. she lives and all that, it's more of that because there is a way that she could play with Carly still in the team as well. Oh, okay. With being, with having two passports and everything. So I think it's purely economics rather than anything to do with, you know, um, uh, Okay. Is everything, yeah. I mean, she she'd be the she'd be the person to you know be be the new kind of Hannah Shaw. If anything, you know, she's got that height. Share and... it. We want Hannah Shaw. Oh, yes. thanks for that. <laughs> there you are. I can't believe that. You know. <laughs> I was being polite. Like, what have I just? <laughs> Um, <clears throat> talking about yourself there, Hannah, you, uh, our last show we had, you weren't sure what you were going to be doing the coming season. Obviously, the season just has gone kaput. I'm still not um, sure. So we don't know. <laughs> so what was going to be my question? Um, I am leading towards staying in the UK like I would like it. You know, I'd like to be closer to home, maybe see my friends one, once or twice in 12 months. That'd be, you know, super great. Um, also, I'm going to be 30 this year. I feel like my my professional life will start winding down, and then maybe it's time to get a, a 
that's a less basketball focused job but that's a really big decision and a really big discussion and it's a lot for a Thursday morning <laughs> <laughs> Talk to, him, talk, to, talk to him then, Adam. <laughs> Should hey, talk to T-side lionesses. <laughs> what, what do you say, Hannah? Oh, I said talk to, talk to him then. <laughs> Make it happen. I will. <laughs> Adam, Adam, she said she wanted to go play for the T-side lionesses. <laughs> I don't even know where T-side is, actually. <laughs> Just don't talk any trash. You're not allowed to. Your game's oh. got to do the for you. Right. So, Hannah, are you born 1990? Yeah. Um, did, you, did you first start playing for England? Did you play for England under 18s in the summer of 2007? Uh, yeah, I played two years under 16, two under 18, two under 20. Um, yeah, so... Did you ever have a teammate called Alyssa Blood? Yeah, she went to Brown. Yeah, so she went to the American school in London. Yes. I went to the American school of England. Len Bush's daughter was my classmate. Our oh. school was each other, yeah. Oh, nice. That's Small really cool. World. Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. It's become an episode of This Is Your Life, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's everyone's life. <laughs> <laughs> any, uh, any more questions, fellas? Ads? Yeah, I, I, well, you just kind of covered it there because I was going to uh, ask kind of what she's doing next You're going to try and recruit, weren't you? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and just hold my sign up like that. But, I mean, you were telling us on the podcast, you, you were literally in the very epicenter of Italy, weren't you, when, when all this started? It's like, you couldn't have been closer to it all. Yeah, and the more I thought about it, um, so originally we were supposed to go to China for the qualifying tournament, and so I had to make two trips to Milan to go and get, um, to go for my like Chinese visa appointment and then to go back to go and pick it up. And it was at the same time of the, um, they call it the biological bomb. So it was the same time as the Valencia game at the, um, against Atalanta, but it was being played at San Siro because... Bergamo's ground was having renovations and I was in Milan at the time when it was all kicking off and it's twice and then I came home and I was actually really sick for a couple of days like I was getting I had like such a bad like cold like flu symptoms I was very close to calling Chema and being like I can't come to camp tomorrow like I'm really struggling and then it was just gone like I just woke up and I was like well I feel so much better and I don't want to wear like a tinfoil hat but maybe I had it I'm just not really sure but yeah evacuating was kind of scary yeah, I thought it was scary because, uh, you know, it's like of all the places in the world at that particular time, it's like, oh, yeah. that's where I am. <laughs> um, my, the president of my, no, my agent called, he said, just pack your bags, like, we're going to get you out tomorrow. And no one from my team had said anything and the president of my club was like, yeah, everything's fine. And I was like, no, no, I was like, my agent said to pack my bags, like, I'm going. Like, there's no, this is fine, I'm going. So, so they wanted you to stay? they they just didn't say anything they were like it's all okay like everything's fine and i was like it's not it's That's not crazy fine. so i'm gonna let you know what's happening because i'm leaving wow. so i had to carry like suitcases on a backpack i was and my my roommate wrote me a letter to the police in italian so if i got stopped i could show them that i was leaving mm. um wow yeah That's it was yeah. it was intense terrifying stuff it's kind of what happened up here as well because um, for the Mystics, three, you know, four of them all stay at one house over mm. in uh, Wally Range. And within two days, they were gone. You know, two of them, um, it's like everyone's fled. Sam back to Australia, Grace to Spain, um, mm. Jasper back to Portugal, Vanessa down to Smile. And it, within two days, this house kind of went from where they all live and everyone's there to just being gone. It's yeah. like... Oh. It was crazy. Crazy times. Josh, my man, anything to add? No, Hannah, absolute pleasure. Look forward to seeing where you end up next and hopefully you don't uh, end your career soon. So um, we need to yeah. change that mentality. I think you should go back to Australia because I think, I think that's... I would uh, love to. I, I, I I'll speak to, to a couple of people I know. Mm -hmm. I'll, uh, I've got a few pictures of them that they don't want me to share, so I can I can help you out in that way. Okay. That's always handy. I used to live on the Sunshine Coast, and you know, it's just in the name, isn't it? Why would you not want to live there? Absolutely, yeah. And uh, let's try and get your commentating career going as well. I think you'll make yeah. a great. Well, thanks. I'd love to have a go. And be Pabs nice is about the people. Best in business, by the way. Pardon, sorry. Pabs is the best in the business. Oh, very good. 
So definitely come and get some pointers. <laughs> definitely not. I'm not, even, I'm not even the best commentator in the Below the Rim team. <laughs> Oh, Pabs knows every stat. I'm telling you, when I first listened to Pabs, I was like, wow, he's the stat guru, I tell you. Oh, you need to talk to Maggie Hanson Morris then. I'm just old. Oh, oh he's on the level. Two of you just yelling, num- yelling numbers at each other. You know what? Podcast with Pablo, Maggie Hanson Morris, and Darren. It's like, yeah, I can just see numbers like <laughs> rotating through my head going, how do like, do this? Point, like green screen of numbers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's just that's why you put a countdown. Yeah, I'll just screw my notes up and do that. That's on another like... level. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Hannah. Um, it's been enlightening. We'll get this out ASAP. Daz, uh, Daz, he's not even here. That's my man. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thanks, Hannah. No worries. Je- cheers, guys. Josh, my Dude, man. Appreciate it. Thanks. Well, speak to you all soon. Take it easy.